My name is Susan Moeller and I am a graduate student at Morningside College. I also serve as a pre-K-5 instructional coach in an elementary building in the Southeast Polk School District. Today, I will be sharing my study on the effect of multiplication subitizing on third graders' fluency and computational knowledge. There is a growing concern for the mathematical achievement level of students in the United States. The United States ranked 11th out of 36 industrialized countries in mathematics. According to the National Association of Educational Progress, or the NAEP report card in 2015, 60% of fourth graders and 67% of eighth graders were performing below grade level. In 2012, Arnold shared that school districts were reporting deficiencies in the area of number sense and automaticity of number facts. I chose to research subitizing because the school in which I work was focusing on mathematical strategies that would encourage deeper conceptual knowledge. Some primary teachers had already begun to use subitizing, but there was some reluctance with the intermediate teachers. Therefore, this practitioner wanted to learn more about the benefit of subitizing in grades three through five. Research supports a need for a change in instru instructional practices in the area of mathematics. A study by Henry and Brown in 2008 compared mathematical instructional practices in the United States to mathematical practices in Japan and Korea. Henry and Brown discovered that Japan and Korea emphasized approaches that were more conceptually driven, while the United States approaches were more procedurally driven. Students in Japan and Korea are scoring at higher levels than students in the United States. Baruti describes three distinct phases that students should progress through in order to successfully learn basic facts. Phase one is modeling and counting. Phase two is deriving answers using reasoning strategies. And phase three is the efficient production of answers. Traditional approaches such as flashcards, time test, and memorization skip the critical phase of phase two. Subitizing is a strategy that encourages students to use reasoning strategies in the phase of two. McDonald, Zezu, and Wilkins in 2015 performed an extensive study of preschoolers and subitizing activities. The study concluded that students instructed with dot images were better able to compose and decompose numbers than students who had not been instructed with subitizing. In 2016, Thunder and Demchak explained that students shown visual images of quantities developed a better understanding of number value and relationships and mental math strategies. The ability to recognize these relationships builds the type of number sense that encourages computational fluency. Many studies could be found in regards to the effectiveness of subitizing in the el elementary grades, particularly primary grades. However, it's more difficult to find studies on subitizing in grades three through five, and in particular multiplication. Therefore, the purpose of this study was to determine the impact of subitizing on third grade students' multiplication fluency. The hypothesis was that students that participated in subitizing instruction would make greater gains in multiplication fluency than students that participated in traditional procedurally directed instruction. This study was a quasi-experimental design with a non-equivalent group. It took place in a Midwest elementary school with approximately 450 students. 70% of the student population was white, 11% Hispanic, 11% Asian, and 8% African American. English language learners made up 6% of the students. 40% of the student population at this elementary building received free or reduced lunch rates. The free or reduced percentage was reflective of the grade level that participated in this study. The building principal and school counselor made every effort to evenly distribute students in classrooms. The experimental group 
was comprised of 25 third grade participants. 11 were females and 14 males, 20 Caucasian, three Hispanic and two Asian. Three of the students had IEPs and one student had a one-to-one -one associate. Six participants had Title I math and reading support. While the control group classroom had 26 third grade participants, evenly distributed 13 males and 13 females. 21 were Caucasian, three Hispanic and two Asian, and two of the participants had IEPs. Four participants had Title I reading and math support. All of the participants took the FastBridge AMATH assessment. This assessment is a computer-based adaptive measure of broad skills. The variety of skills assessed include counting and cardinality, operations and algebraic thinking, numbers and operations, measurement and data, and geometry. The assessment included 30 questions and was not timed. The math A, the A math assessment has no threat to integrator reliability because the assessment is scored automatically by the computer. It has a reliability of 0 0.95 and in addition it has a concurrent validity of 0 0.76. Therefore, this demonstrates that A math is strong in how accurately it measures achievement for mathematics. For the next 10 weeks, the control and experimental groups participated in 10 minutes of daily fluency instruction. The district had recommended using the GoMath Fluency Builder portion of the textbook, along with the supplemental program of Thinking with Numbers by Larry Leitzinger. Both were primarily procedurally directed routines. The control group participated in both of these routines that were procedurally focused. The experimental group's 10-minute fluency in instruction consisted of skip counting and GoMath Fluency Builder practice twice a week and subitizing three times a week. Participants were instructed with quick glances of arrays or dot images, and they wrote multiplication facts that were representative of subitizing cards. Discussion was facilitated so that the most efficient method of arriving at the correct solution was emphasized. As a reminder, the purpose of this study was to test the effectiveness of subitizing on multiplication fluency and independent sample t-tests were used to analyze the results. The fall AMATH independent samples t-test indicated t of 50 equals 1.578 with a p-value of 0.121. This indicates that no significant difference was between the control and the experimental group on the fall AMATH test. The control group scored just slightly higher with a mean of 206.6 and a standard deviation of 3.831. The experimental group had a mean of 204.4 and a standard deviation of 5.776. The results of the winter AMATH independent samples t-test, t of 50 was equal to 1.640 with a p-value of 0 0.108. Again, this indicated that there was no significant difference between the control and experimental groups on the winter AMATH test. The experimental group scored higher with a mean of 213.1 and a standard deviation of 4.92, while the control group had a mean of 211.1 and a standard deviation of 3.86. The table confirms that there was not a significant increase from the fall to the winter AMATH assessment. However, one may note that the effect size moderately increased. This figure shows the means and standard deviations of the control and experimental groups from fall to winter. Even though there was not a significant increase, the experimental group did outperform the control group. The control group showed an average increase of 4.5, while the experimental group increased by 8.7. The expected growth for third graders from fall to winter, A math, is four points. 
Whenever a study is performed, one must consider the implications of the outcomes. In this study, teachers should be reminded of new routines, such as the resubitizing routine needs to be modeled, practiced, and reviewed. More time may be needed to accurately determine the results of a new routine. Secondly, students may need to be explicitly taught the correlation between representations and algorithms. Finally, A math assess more skills than just basic facts and number sense. There may have been a more direct correlation if the test assessed only those two factors. Implications of this study for students include students do not all learn in the same way. The more pathways that students are provided helps them to arrive at answers and gives them opportunities for them to be successful. The increase in the experimental group may have been related to the classroom discussion about the representations. This is also supported by Vygotsky's social constructivism theory. Students that learn through active participation and peer discussions. Students had to use reasoning and justify why an algorithm was represented by the subitizing card. Finally, implications for administrators and instructional leaders could be that it's vital that best practices are continued to be researched and support must be provided, provided for best practices to be implemented in classrooms. One might consider several changes for a future study similar to this. First of all, a larger sample size would help to determine if the results of the study could be confirmed or denied. One suggestion would be to require all teachers in the district to implement subitizing instruction. Secondly, instead of just using subitizing instruction three days a week, increase it to five days of the week. This may provide a more accurate measure of effectiveness when comparing the procedural instruction to subitizing. It may also be beneficial to lengthen the duration of the study. The subitizing instruction was 10 weeks. This was a new routine to the students and it took a couple of weeks for the students to learn the actual routine. Finally, it may be difficult to directly correlate the results of the subitizing instruction due to the assessment. As mentioned previously, at the time of this study, the only valid and reliable assessment available at this target school was the FAST A math assessment. While it is valid and reliable, one must remember that it is a broad assessment of math skills. It assesses more than just multiplication fluency and number sense. In the future, the assessment, an assessment more directly aligned to multiplication fluency would be recommended. In conclusion, the purpose of the study was to determine the effectiveness of subitizing instruction on third graders multiplication and fluency. This study did not confirm that subitizing was more effective than procedural approaches to teaching multiplication fluency and computational knowledge.